What does 1500 kilograms, zero to 60 in less than four seconds, and all for the relatively low price of 40,000 US dollars sound like? Sounds to me like China's got a new EV sports car and someone has put a deposit down on one. Oh yes. This is the perfect chance to take EVs to the next level, which is why it's so exciting. It's completely different from the market trends of more luxury, more gadgets, and more electronics to go wrong. It strips everything back to the very basics. So much so that I've put a admittedly tiny deposit on one. So what am I buying? It's the SC01 from a new company with Xiaomi backing. I am excited by all the developments in EV tech in China, especially as more domestic brands get more creative and bring out more interesting cars. But no one, apart from a couple of manufacturers, have bought out EV sports cars. The first one, of course, was the Tesla Roadster, based on a Lotus chassis. And look where Tesla are now. Next was the Chen2 K50, which I did do a review of uh, a couple of years ago, but it hasn't been a massive sales success. So what are they doing Bring out a new EV sports car? Take the idea of Lotus, simplify, add lightness, and whack in a load of EV batteries. People would be saying, oh, well, it's gonna be very heavy. Yes, it's gonna be heavier than a typical ICE car, but it'd be the lightest EV sports car on the market, one of the lightest EV cars there is. They're aiming for a weight of less than 1,300 kilograms, which is very, very low. So who is it? What is it? What's going on? Well, it's developed by a guy called Feng Xiaotong. He's got his own YouTube channel you can click up here. And he's a car customizer in Beijing. He's teamed up with his mates, got a healthy dose of investment from Xiaomi, yes, that Xiaomi, to build and sell this late in 2023. I was so captivated by what they were offering and at that price point that I just said, yep, here's my deposit. Now my deposit is tiny, it's just 200 RMB, or about 30 US dollars. But I do get some benefits for that, which I'm gonna tell you about in a minute. Like I get to drive lots of EVs every week, every month, and they are amazing. The way things have changed in China in the past few years, the developments, it's all moved so quickly. But there's been an obsession with more and more technology, making these cars much like our mobile phones, very advanced, amazing at what they can do, but oh so complicated, getting heavier and heavier. So it's really refreshing for someone like Feng Xiaotong to come along and say, nope, we're stripping all of that back, no screens, nothing else, it's all about the drive. For me, that was really, really compelling. So let's talk about some of the basic specs of the SC01. So it's zero to 60 in 3.9 seconds, stated to be less than 1,300 kilograms. It's got dual motors, that's a good thing, with about 390 kilowatts of power, that's about 435 horsepower, the range of about 500 kilometers. Now some of you might be saying, hang on, there's cars out there which can do zero to 60 faster than this. Yes, of course, and Feng Xiaotong has said this himself, it's not about flat zero to 60 times, it's about the driving experience, it's about what the car is like on straights, round corners. Don't get me wrong, it's gonna be a rapid car, but it's also gonna be lightweight, and it's gonna be a lot of fun, I can tell already, from the footage that I've seen online, that this is all about that driving experience. And it's so refreshing that it's basic. It's so basic that if you look at some of the clips now, it is literally a frame with what I can only assume a fiberglass body bolted onto it. Very basic inside. This is just a prototype at the moment. Uh, obviously it's gonna go through a bit of refinement in the next year, but it's nice to see that this is the direction they're going in. And the first video they brought out was of them driving it, driving it fast, driving it around a track. Not a fancy promotional video looking at the angles, looking at the lights and things like that. So I know that Feng Xiaotong has really got the right idea with this. And I love his vision, so I'm kind of buying into his vision. I haven't committed that much money yet, but let's see how it develops over the next year or so. Now we don't know anything about batteries, the battery architecture, or the motors, but I imagine they're gonna do something similar to the Wuling Mini EV, but obviously, a lot better quality. Wheeling Mini EV uses a lot of off-the-shelf parts uh, which are very cheap to buy and replace. They're not potentially automotive grade, 
they're just very basic components. Now what they're probably going to do with the SCO1 is get a lot of their components from manufacturers who know what they're doing. So maybe the springs, the coilovers will be from someone like KW. Maybe the motors will be from another manufacturer. Who knows? They could be from BYD. They could be from NEO. We have no idea. This is pure speculation. But they're going to use the best components they can to reach that price point of less than $40,000. They've stated that. It was one of the big things they said on their launch. And so I'm really excited on how they're going to do that. And I wish them the best of luck. So this reminds me a lot of those plucky UK car startups such as Lotus, uh, Noble, uh, BAC with the Mono. It's very much in that vein of a few people, passionate people, who want to build something really cool and something they just like to drive. This is not going to be a huge sales success in China. It's a very niche product. Um, I think they've probably got around about a thousand orders, judging by my, my group that I'm in with the owners. I'll tell you about that in a minute. We've got about 100 people in the group. I think there's about 10 groups so far. And this is just guesswork. I don't know anything. This is what I can see from what I've experienced so far. So like I said, that's basically all we know at the moment. Now there's some wonderful footage on that YouTube channel. I've cut some of the footage into this as well. I think the car looks fantastic. A little bit like the Lotus Elise from the side, uh, very much like the Lancia Stratos from the rear and some of the other angles as well. It's not a bad thing, it's simple. They haven't gone over the top. Now, I'm actually in a WeChat group, like a WhatsApp group, a group chat with uh, Feng Xiaotong and with a group of 100 or so customers. I think there's about 10 of these groups. And we're all in there chatting with the guy who started this company. He's building the car now. He's asking us our feedback. Well, what do you think about this? What do you think about this? Do you want a screen? Do you not want a screen? This is a great way to involve your customers and build a car. Now, obviously, with too much feedback, it might spoil like his pure vision. But I think this is a fantastic way to get us all engaged. And we're all looking forward to hopefully test driving the car. Maybe early in 2023. We don't know yet. I'll be one of the first to be there because I'm so excited by the car. I think that what he's doing and with the trend that Chinese EVs are going in, there's going to be a lot more sports cars this year. The MG Cyberster that will come out this year, uh, sorry, next year in 2023. Uh, GAC have just announced one. But I think this is the one with the most pure kind of form, pure kind of idea, without complications, without having a voice assistant, which I'm sure those other ones will have, not to the det detriment of their cars, but this is about pure driving. This is going to be a fantastic drive. I can already tell. I mean, I'm going to do a review of it. I'm going to try not to be biased. And then at some point next year, I'm going to have to put the money down and actually buy it. That's the, the point at which I think this is going to be worthwhile or not. I don't know. Let's wait and see. Let's see if they can make that delivery date of late 2023. And be sure to subscribe here because I'll give you a few updates as soon as I get them from the WeChat group that I'm in or from their YouTube channel or any other news that they send out. I'm really excited about this car for what it stands for, what it represents. I hope you guys are as well. Let me know in the comments if you like this car coming from China and the direction that China EVs are going in. So that's all for now. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.